Ladies and gentlemen, this is a video you've all been waiting for. First of all, apologies before I even start the video. Apologies for my voice. It has been due to the common call that has been going on for quite a while and your dear counsel finally got it. However, in today's video, I'm here to discuss with you whatever you need to know legally before you construct that dream house, that dream building, that dream arcade and plaza just downtown, the dream mall you've always thought about. So today we're going to look at the legal aspects concerning construction and everything you need to know before you construct anywhere in the world and in Uganda. Let's go. <laughs> It's really been a while since we last met. However, like I said earlier, I've been suffering from flu and cough, but that doesn't stop the law from being simplified for you and everyone to understand both nationally and internationally. So in today's video, I'm going to discuss with you everything you need to know about construction all over the world and in Uganda, because I'll give more specific examples in Uganda. First of all, we need to know that construction is something that we do on a daily basis. And I know everyone has that thing that they've always wanted to construct. When we were kids, we used to try and construct Legos, or uh, I don't know, sand castles, but this is actual reality and I wanted to give you the legal perspective on everything. So let's jump right in. First of all, let's look at the acts that we're going to look at concerning this particular video. We're going to look at the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda, number one. We're going to look at the National Environment Act, which is the NEMA Act. We're going to look at the Physical Planning Act. And we're going to look at all other statutes which are relevant concerning construction in Uganda, especially the Building Act of Uganda. So... <coughs> The Constitution of the Republic of Uganda gives everyone a right to own property. And property can entail things like land, a building, or a car. But in this, in this specific video, we're going to talk about a building and the fact that you have a right to buy land and construct on that particular piece of land. This is stipulated under Article 26 of the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. So, aside from you having your right to own property in Uganda, we also have checks and balances like everything in the law we all have checks and balances in life even if you have a right they must be something that should be able to counteract that right so if you own a piece of land in let's say a swamp i've addressed this on this channel before you can't just erect a building on a swamp that is illegal even the people who are doing it that is illegal but let's go further into the video and i'll, I'll explain that in specific article 39 of the constitution states that every person every citizen of uganda has a right to be able to protect the environment meaning much as you have your right to own property under article 26 of the constitution article 39 comes in protect the environment we also have the earlier objectives of the constitution in that you have a right to own property but you must protect the environment in which you're constructing for future generations to thrive so there are a number of things that you must undergo before constructing a building it looks very simple on the surface we may see the capitol building in the usa or we, we might see uh the vatican in rome or we may even see acacia mall in kampala but for all those people to have taken those steps to construct there it wasn't just out of just it was an entire process it was an entire legal process so we need to look at the specific things that you need before actually attaining uh, your dream building in uganda so let's go one of the biggest requirements you need to know is that, first of all, the fact that you're constructing a building in a certain area, you need to do what's called concern for human life. And this is basically what's called an Asia study. So an Asia study is an envir environmental impact assessment study. So that is what's called Asia. So an environmental impact assessment means that you are going to buy this piece of land. You're planning on starting up a Kesha mall, let's say in uh, Luzira, where there is a swamp. So you need to have your plan first. I'm going to construct a Kesha Mall in Luzira. So if you go and construct in Luzira, first of all, they need to understand that you're constructing near a swamp. Now, the authorities who are in charge of, the authorities who are in charge of uh, the environment all over, such as National Forest Authority, such as NEMA, which is National Environment Management Authority, need to conduct an Asia study. Now, they're going to want to know, if you're constructing your Kesha Mall near a swamp, what environmental impact does it have on that environment couldn't you put your acacia mall in an area which is like a hill or maybe a flatland area or maybe in central kampala they'll ask you why are you choosing a swamp because if you choose a swamp you're going to now demolish or you're going to damage the environment i've explained many times that you cannot construct in a wetland so i give it as an example because this is one of the best things to understand um once you construct in an area where you're not supposed to construct already you're violating 
the permits and you're, you're already violating what you're supposed to do and where you're supposed to construct. So when we look at value for life, it's not just human life. It's also animal life, so plant life. And it's also the fact that if you construct in that particular area, what is the impact that your building is going to have in that particular area? So you need to do what's called an environment impact assessment. Secondly, you need to do what is called getting permits. Now, I already mentioned that we have different bodies or different national statutory bodies which are, which are extremely uh, involved in, in someone's construction of a, of a building here in Kampala. We, we must have the involvement of KCCA. We must have the involvement of NEMA. We must have the involvement of the Building Act. In, in other words, you must be able to get permits for all of those institutions. So we have, a, we have the KCC, which is the Kampala City Council Authority. If you are constructing any building in Kampala, KCCA needs to be aware and they need to be able to give you a permit or a license like other people may be able to understand in another country. So you must get a license from KCCA. You must get a license from NEMA, which is National Environment Management Authority. You need to get a license under the Physical Planning Act of Uganda. You must get so many permits which accrue to what you're doing. In other words, if you are constructing a building maybe in the outskirts of Kampala, still KCCA needs to be aware. Still, National Forest Authority has to be aware. Still, NEMA has to be aware. So all the authorities which are concerned with the environment need to be aware and you need to get a license. Now, short of any license that you are required to get in relation to the building that you're constructing or the area that you're constructing in, then that can even lead to them taking down your building or construction will stop or you can even land in jail or even pay a fine for that. So let's go to the final things that you need and then we'll just wrap up this video because I wanted to give you tips about how you can be able to construct a building much easier and then you can have a nice life. Now let's go to the most important things that we need before we wrap up the video. We have the Building Control Act of Uganda and this is, aside from the constitution, this is the major act that is considered when you are building in the world or in Uganda in particular. Now the Building Control Act in its entirety and in, in its commencement, whenever an act, whenever you open an act, you're going to see the commencement. So <coughs> according to the Building Control Act, it establishes what's called the Building Review Board. Now the Building Review Board has a number of representatives from different aspects of life in Uganda. So we have representatives from let's say people with disabilities representatives from local government representatives from urban development like the urban section of government we also have professionals who can be able to review whatever plan whatever building you're planning or erecting so let me give you an example i'll go back to my example that i want to build a similar replica of acacia mall in lozira wetland now if i submit in my plan to the building review board under the building control act they're supposed to sit down and then lay out my my plan on the table and they're supposed to have so many people who are going to review this plan does it move along with what the NEMA act says which is the national environment act does it move accordance in accordance with the national forest authority act does it move in accordance with the kcc act if it's in if it's being built in the central metropolitan of kampala does it also cater for persons with disabilities? That's a very important thing. If you've noticed, most buildings in Uganda have stairs and they have a ramp for people with disabilities. Unfortunately, most people tend to use the ramp and yet you're able-bodied and you can move on the stairs. So you end up not giving someone room, a person with disability room to actually use the ramp. I hope, I hope God does really pay you in kind for that. <laughs> but aside from that, it's important to know that you're submitting in your plan for a building. It's important to know that your plan is going to be reviewed by so many people. That's why someone can buy a piece of land in SNA, like in the actual central part of Kampala, but it will even take them 20 years to actually start constructing. If you do not meet all the requirements that I've stipulated in this video. So you need to have the permits, you need to have the licenses, you need to, you need to do everything which is statutorily, which is statutorily obligated by you meaning you should all your plans should be moving in accordance with the law so if everything is said and done then your building can be approved or your building plan can be approved one more thing to consider it's not just representatives from government who are going to actually review your plan we are also going to have professionals such as lawyers such as architects such as engineers 
it's not just enough to know that you're constructing the right area. It's enough to know that in your plan, you have a million bags of cement or you have 500 bags of cement. But an, a senior architect somewhere else is going to be consulted who is a consultant for government. And government is going to ask a senior consultant, 500 bags, this, this particular person is asking for permission for us to accept him to build, to construct a building in Kampala. But he's saying in his plan he has 500 bags of cement. Will that really hold? So if the architect looks at the building, the design, and consults civil engineers, and they find that 500 bags are too little, then your, your bid is going to be cancelled. So he may find that you need 3,000 bags of cement, you may need 400 pillars, you may need so much. So that was just a big view that the Building Control Act of Uganda provides for that particular thing, that you do, that you do need approvals from so many aspects for you to actually construct. Because buildings in Kampala have, co have collapsed. Buildings in Kampala have collapsed and killed people, or they are weak, or the foundation is so weak. But because people did not use, or they did not take the right legal steps to actually construct these buildings. So let's go to the final part of this video, and then we wrap up. So let's finally go to how to apply for a building permit. Now, like I've said, all the other acts are very important. The Physical Planning Act, the NEMA Act, the National Forest Authority Act. But you can get all those licenses. But the most important thing is, according to what the Building Act says, do you have everything? So like I've stated, you need licenses from all the others. You need permits. Now, to actually apply for a building permit or a building license, you need formally apply to the Building Review Board. Now, like I said, the Building Review Board is under the Building Control Act. You need to physically apply to them and you need to also submit in a number of requirements that need to be certified first before your building is even considered or before they even consider giving you a building permit. Firstly, let's even go to what you and your architect need. We need to submit in all your details of who you are, where you live, uh, preferably your sources of income because they need to know where are you getting the money to build this building. You need to also submit in the certificate or registration number and certificate of your architect. Remember in every building, it's not just the owner or the founder of the building. It's not just a civil engineer, but most importantly, the architect. He's the one who starts, he's the one who starts a building in any, in anything. For example, the way God is the architect of this world. So he thought about everything before making it. And even in the Bible, he gave us... <laughs> specific guidelines as to how he built the world in seven days so your architect is supposed to give you a number of is supposed to submit in a, a number of things which are necessary for the building review board to be able to look at and say okay this guy is a credible architect he's someone who is good and i think we can be able to trust that he will build he will construct the building for this guy efficiently so we need the registration number of his certificate he needs to have a valid practicing certificate as an architect, meaning it must be renewed all the time. Just like us lawyers, we're supposed to have a valid practicing certificate that we're supposed to renew per year. So even if his license is, is invalid or it has expired for the year and he has all the other requirements, then still a building permit will not be given to you. So he needs to have all his details and paperwork ready legally. He needs to have a place of, of, of residence. I mean, he needs to have a place of, of work, like in case of anything that the building gets or in case of in case the building control board or the building review board needs to look into who this architect is they know where to find him meaning he needs to have his place of business in line he needs to be registered under under Uganda registration services bureau which is URSB so i think you can see all the steps i'm trying to take for i will not give you all uh, all the requirements that are needed but i just wanted you to know that for you to actually apply for a building permit. You need to have all your paperwork ready. You need to have a certificate of no objection. You need to have a credible practicing certificate. He also needs to have a certificate which is stamped by the, the association of, I'll call the association of, of, of certified architects. Your civil engineer also needs to be someone who is credible and needs to be recognized under the law. He must have a press of, of of business, you must, you must be registered, you must be known, you must have practiced for some years. They, they need to know that you're in safe hands when they, are when they are constructing your building. So, how can your building permit be revoked? Or when can you get into legal trouble when you are constructing a building? Under Section 34 of the Building Control Act, it states that any person who constructs a building without a valid uh, building permit or other valid permits of the NEMA, 
or National Environment Authority, or you do not have a, an environmental impact assessment form, then you are liable under the Building Control Act and you might find yourself in a lot of trouble because they want to save people's lives. People are going to actually work in your building. So if your building, if your foundation is very weak and your building collapses, you're going to lead to the death of countless lives. So I wanted to give you a sneak peek into what you need to know before constructing in Uganda and in the world in general because I, do, I think our law may not be so different from those of you who are in China, in Japan, in Korea, in the United States, in UK, Norway, wherever you are. So, until next time, I mean you're still Terry Kahuma. Please, feel free to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and most importantly, please share these videos and also leave in the comment section anything that you'd want me to talk about in a future video, whether it's current events, whether it's whatever I want to talk about, or troublesome legal topics which are affecting you in the long run. I remain you truly. Until next time, please wish me well, and I'll see you next time. Bye.